Hi guys, it's Eleanor and today we're gonna create our own custom tune shader in Unity. And if you don't know what cell shading is, it's a non-realistic technique used in games and cartoons. And the idea is you use big chunks of colors to shade instead of gradients. It's used in many games including Wind Waker, Breath of the Wild, Team Fortress 2 and many many more. We're gonna start with a new project and I'm just gonna add a sphere to use as a dummy. Scale it and position it in front of the camera. Now we need to create a material by right clicking create material and name it appropriately. From the shader drop down I'm going to select unlit texture and I'm going to give it this free texture downloaded from the Unity Asset Store. Let's drag this material to our sphere and now we're ready to start. Right click create shader, unlit shader and let's name it tune shader. And let's open this up. Up here we have our properties. Here we can define properties which we can control from the Unity interface such as color pickers, sliders, etc. We have the update structure and the V2F structure, which are the arrays being fed to the fragment and vertex functions down below. You can see a list of available variables you can add to these in the Unity documentation. If we want to use something in the vertex or fragment functions, we have to add them to these structures. I'm just going to go ahead and remove all the fog bits so they don't distract us since we don't really need them. The basic idea behind calculating the lights and shadows in the tune shader is this. We have a light source that shines a light in a specific direction and this is defined as a vector. Let's take a random point on our object. This point has a normal which is basically just a vector that's a 90 degrees of the surface of the object. The angle between the light direction and the normal can tell us at what angle is the light source hitting this point. The dot product of the two vectors is commonly used to measure this. If we normalize the two vectors, meaning we just make sure they're of length 1, since it simplifies the calculation, and the angle would always be the same regardless of the length, in this case the dot product would range between minus 1 and 1. If the light is directly hitting the point, then the dot product is 1. If it's at 90 degrees, then the dot product is 0. And if it's facing in the exact opposite direction, then it's minus 1. So let's go back to our code and implement this. Let's add float3normal to the app data structure so we can use it in the vertex function. However, this is the normal in object space and to turn this into world space, Unity has provided us with the Unity object to world normal function. The output of the vertex function is fed to the fragment function, but we still need to add it to the V2F structure to be able to use it. So let's do that. Float3 world normal colon normal. And I've made an error in the recording by putting text chord 1 in there, but it should say normal. Let's add our tune function up here. We need to give it a return type float and it will take two parameters, a normal and a light direction. Let's define a variable float and l and that will be the dot product of the normal and the light direction and don't forget to normalize them. We want to group everything with a dot product less than zero uh, as that would be our shadow as this is everything that's facing in the opposite direction of the light source. We can use the max function for this. So now if the dot product is less than zero, n dot l would be zero. For now, let's just return this as it is and we'll come back to it. Down here in the fragment function, we have the sample. So let's multiply by our tune function to add the shadows. We will give it the world normal variable we defined earlier. And for the light direction, we can use underscore world space light pause zero dot x, y, z. This I believe would work with a direction light and you need to look at the documentation to see what to use if you have a different type of light. 
you might also have to add some tags. I'll leave a link in the description box to the bit of the documentation you need to take a look at. Now if we go back to Unity, we can select our shader instead of the unlit texture shader we used for our sphere earlier. And you can see we have a block shadow, but we still have a gradient for the rest of the sphere. And that is because we are precisely calculating the n.l for the light portion. And we're not grouping values together or doing anything with them really. So if we go back to our tune function, we can divide the n.l variable that we're returning in several parts by dividing by any number and then rounding down. So if we use 0.3, we have one group from 0 to 0.3, a second one from 0.3 to 0.6, and then 0.6 to 0.9, and then lastly 0.9 to 0.1. So if we save and go back, there we go, it's starting to take shape. Let's add some properties to help us control this from the Unity UI. Let's add one called Brightness, which will be a range from 0 to 1, and let's default it to 0 0.3. We should also list all of our properties down here to be able to use them. And now go down to the Fragment function and let's add the Brightness. And if we go back to Unity now, we have control over how dark our shadows are. So we're basically allowing for ambient lighting to be defined. Let's also add a strength property and we will multiply our tune function by this so we can control how strong are the blocks of color. And let's try that in Unity. It's already looking so much better. but let's add a couple of more things. Let's add a color property so we can give the light some tint. Just multiply the tune function by the color. And lastly, earlier we hard coded 0.3 value here, but we want to be able to define that from the editor as well. So let's add another range property between 0 and 1, and let's replace the hard coded 0.3 value with this in the tune function. So there we go, we have our own custom tune shader from scratch. We can play around with the values to achieve different results, and I hope you have fun with this. I hope you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing, and I'll see you next time. Thank you, bye!